we first introduce the Reverend Drew Bennett for invitation? Let's pray together, if you would, with me. Almighty God, the scripture says that righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne, and that love and faithfulness go before you. You have made each of us in your image, which means that you have made us to bear your authority and dominion in the world for the flourishing of all that you have created. But these that we set apart today for this high and holy public service to which you have ordained them, they especially rule and decide doing righteousness and justice for the good of those they serve. What an important work. What a sacred obligation is theirs among us. And so we pray for them. We pray that you would make them wise, that they might judge fairly and justly. Find the balance between truth and love and earn the trust of the people they serve. We pray that you make them compassionate in their dealing with so much brokenness that they would remember that often the worst offenders are also victims themselves. Keep their hearts from the cynicism and despair that come so easily, from hard hearts that would cause them to judge before they judge, that they might remember those who come before them are so much more than a record of their offenses. We pray you make them humble. Keep them from the pride that so naturally attends to this kind of public recognition station. Remind them that they are to be public servants who go about their work with dignity and respect for all. We pray, Holy Father, for this day and this time that we have now, and we pray that you bless these we've come to recognize this afternoon and make them a blessing to our community. Not only for them, we pray, but for all our judges. Um, for the high and holy calling that have among us. And we pray these things in your name. Amen. Reception. The reception is going to be here in Bartow. It is at a facility that is in, uh, anticipating this possible weather and is gearing up for it as far as having uh, places for all of us, tents and, and uh, it, both interior and exterior. So there's going to be more than enough room, and that's at 480 South Broadway Avenue here in Bartow, which is going to be uh, something that I'm inviting all of you to attend at the conclusion. The one other thing I'm going to remind you at the end, this is a rare opportunity for all of us to be together. And we are going to try herding cats and get a group photograph of all of us judges as we look good in our robes this afternoon. So at the conclusion after the benediction, we're going to very quickly set up, take a group photograph, and then we'd invite you to come up and congratulate those that have been uh, for, this, for who this investiture is for. So if you'll just indulge us with that at the conclusion. Uh, one of the things that it's my responsibility to do uh, is introduce to you the judges that serve you in the 10th Judicial Circuit and in each of the counties constituting the 10th Judicial Circuit, which are Polk Highlands and Hardy. Uh, this is a rare opportunity for all of us to be together. It's a rare opportunity for you to see and be introduced to the judges that do come to work each and every day to serve you in the capacity uh, that they've been either appointed and or thereafter elected to. So let me introduce to you our, uh, my fellow judges and those that serve you. First we have Mr. Bruce Smith, Ellen Masters, Olin Schimbels, James Yancey, Mark Carpenter, Italian judge. 
the Italian. <laughs> uh, I'm going to that sauce. So, Leo Roddenberry, Marcus Ezell, Stephen Self, Michael Rady, Angela Cowden, John Radabaugh, Mark Hofstede, Wayne Durden, Catherine Cumby, William Sykes, Glenn Shelby, Andrea Smith, <coughs> Kevin Nadoni, and from our county courts, from Harding County, Jeff McKibben. From our Pope County, we have Mary Catherine Green, Robert L. Williams, Robert Griffin, Susan Barber, John Kirkland, uh, Gerald Hill II, and our senior judges, oh, and Bob Grove, not out of order there. Uh, and we have as our senior judges here with us today, uh, Susan Roberts, and Timothy Kuhn, Randall McDonald, and from the Second District Court of Appeal, Charles Davis Jr., who was formerly a circuit court judge with us and a chief judge when I was uh, inducted uh, some 17, 18 years ago. Sitting out in the audience is also one of our favorite judges, and that's Judge Oliver Green, who is present here with us today. Uh, this is one of the fearful times that anybody standing in front of a group such as this has, and that is to try to identify those that have served or are serving in public office and give you some recognition. We have in our audience, at least I've been told, is uh, our good sheriff, Brady Judd. We have from the Board of County Commissioners, Melody Bell, back there and uh, Todd Dantzler from one of your county commissioners. Uh, Wesley Davis a, is a representative from Colleen Burton's office. Uh, we, Stacy Butterfield, who works with us quite uh, every day, I mean, she runs the courthouse basically, <laughs> is our clerk. Uh, we have Karen Whaley who, from Ben Albritton's office. We have Mr. Jerry Hill, our state attorney. And I think Representative John Wood made it in through the rain, too. Anybody else that I've missed? I don't see any hands, so thank you, Dick. Um, we are going to now proceed. This is unusual that we have four judges to present to you, three circuit court judges and a county court judge. Uh, this is a, uh, something that is, I can tell you from my own experience, a very special, special thing here with our friends and family and uh, be able to be introduced to you and take the oath. Let me just, as a quick aside, the oath. The oath we take, in fact, every officer in the state takes the oath. It's an oath that is very solemnly taken, but it always reminds me, very beginning of everything like this, we stand up and we all take an oath, and that's the oath pledging allegiance to the United States of America. That is something that you know, all of us take really to heart. The oath we take, we take very much to heart. Uh, and it is all in an effort to serve you, uh, the people of the circuit. With that having been said, the first judge that is going to go through the investiture this afternoon is Michelle Pink. And we're going to have the Honorable Charles Davis, Jr., a retired judge, introduce her. May it please the court. <coughs> Chief Judge Jacobson, honorable members of the 10th Judiciary, 10th Circuit Judiciary, family and friends of our honorees. It's indeed a personal honor to be invited to participate in this ceremony this afternoon. And it's truly a personal privilege to be able to introduce to you the Honorable Michelle Pinkett. <coughs> Although she was born in Indiana, Judge Pinkett grew up in Titusville and then later moved to Orange Park in the Jacksonville area. From graduation from high school, she enrolled at 
Florida State University to pursue a degree in sociology. Upon completion of her undergraduate studies, she immediately enrolled in the FSU College of Law. On her second day of school, she met a 2L named Steve as he was announcing a party to be held that night at the nursing school. She was interested in meeting Steve, but not necessarily too keen on the idea of competing with the entire nursing school. However, things worked out, and she would become Mrs. Steve Pinkett. In 1990, with their JDs in hand, Michelle and Steve moved to Stewart, Steve's hometown. There, Judge Pinkett took a job with a PI firm, but realized that this just wasn't a fit for her, and so she began looking for open positions. She saw a listing for a position as an entry attorney with an agency back then called HRS. She arranged for an interview, and she and Steve drove to Polk County for the interview. Before going to the interview, she dropped Steve off at the courthouse. The interview went well. They offered her a job, which she declined. And then she went back to the courthouse to pick up Steve. Steve asked, well, did you get the job? Well, she explained that she had had an offer, but declined the offer. Then he advised that while he was at the courthouse, he walked to the state attorney's office, talked with some folks, they offered him a job, and he took it. And he was to be an assistant state attorney the following Monday. And thus the die was cast. The Pinkets were to move to Polk County. Two months later, Judge Pinkett responded to an ad placed by the court administrator's office for a staff attorney. She met with Judges Bentley and Strickland and Nick Satina, the court administrator, who hired her as the staff attorney for the family division. I think this probably makes her the first staff attorney to come back later and be a judge whose first assignment is to the division that she served as a staff attorney. It was at this time that I met, met Judge Peter. I was a circuit judge at the time and then rotated into the family division, where I sort of think I served about six months. It was in this capacity that I worked with her, and then upon my election as chief judge in July of, of 1995, I asked Michelle if she would come and serve as the uh, staff attorney for the chief judge's office, a request which she accepted. But alas, our tour of duty was only about a year or so. In mid-1996, the Pinkets welcomed their first child, Harrison, and Judge Pinkett decided to forego the role of staff attorney in favor of the role of full-time mother, a choice with which I fully concur. After leaving employment with the court, she did work part-time in the law practice with her husband, who had gone into private practice. She worked briefly with DCF, she did court-appointed dependency representation and served pro bono as an attorney ad litem for juveniles who were in need of representation. It was during this time that the Pinkets welcomed their second child, Claire, to the family. In 2008, Judge Pinkett felt a personal call to enter ministry and accepted a position as a children's pastor at All Saints Episcopal Church in Lakeland. In a few months, her responsibilities were expanded to include youth up through their high school and so she served for children and youth in that capacity until her election last fall. Now, under normal circumstances, I'd be able to stand here and say, I predict to you that Michelle Pinkett will become an excellent judge. But since she's already been on the bench for eight months, you already know that. She's bright, very quick learner, committed to understanding the law before making decisions. She has an admirable work ethic starting her docket each morning at 8.15 or earlier, if needed, to see that the party's got a time to hear it. Her demeanor suits her well in her new role as judge. She will listen, consider, and then decide. Do not mistake her quiet disposition for timidity or indecision. Her compassion and concerns for others, exemplified by her service at the church, causes her to give full consideration to everyone. Her experience in the law, her life experiences as wife and mother, her years as a minister all equip her and give her the credentials needed to become a real asset to the bench in the Tenth Circuit. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my high honor to present to you for the public administration of her oath of office, 
the Honorable Michelle P. Participating in the enrobing of Judge Pinkett is her mother, Martha Pope, husband, Steve Pinkett, children, Sarah Harrison. professionalism and civility, which is uh, incumbent upon all ju judges to exercise. Presenting that would be John Mark Tamayo of the uh, Avoda, which is the American War Trial. On behalf of the Tampa Bay chapter of the American War Trial Advocates, I'd like to present to you this best plaque. If I could just read uh, back of this, it always talks about professionalism and civility. And the reason behind that is because our main mission is to preserve the right to a jury trial. And every everyone should be afforded the right to a jury trial to be treated with professionalism and courtesy. And that's our mission. And we keep this plaque in honor of your tremendous accomplishment. Thank you very much. Presenting the nameplate from the uh, as a circuit court judge is the Honorable Andrea Smith, our new DCA representative. Good afternoon, everyone. As um, Judge Jacobson said, I'm the new second DCA representative with the Florida Conference of Circuit Judges. The conference's membership is made up of all active and retired judges throughout the state of Florida, except those who have returned to practicing law. The purpose of the conference is to assist circuit judges 
in meeting their statutory and constitutional duties and responsibilities more efficiently and effectively. It is with my great pleasure to present to you this nameplate with your that's inscribed with your name as well as your commission date, and to welcome you to the bench and to the conference. I wish for you a long and distinguished career as a circuit. over and over, and this was that little advice, keep your investiture speech short. <laughs> I, I, I was probably told that 20 times, so I'm going to do my very best to keep it short. But um, I did run a campaign, and there are a lot of people I would like to thank. I am not going to name people individually, as that would be quite tedious. I do want to uh, acknowledge my family, who have come a long way to be here with me. My brother John and his wife Lori are here, my sister Julie and her husband Ken. My brother-in-law came and I didn't know he was coming where, well, Brian is here, Brian Pinkett is also here. And I, I appreciate all of you being here to be with me on this special day. Um, as I said, there are too many people individually to thank, but I want to thank some groups of people. One group of people is my church family from All Saints Episcopal Church. They were there for me and they did a great deal of work for me and supported me and prayed for me. I want to thank everyone who put up a red sign and said Michelle Bingham for Judge or wore a t-shirt or um, went door to door with me and did all of those things. So all of you know that I'm thanking all of you even though I can't thank you individually. There are a couple people that I want to thank individually even though I just said I wasn't going to. <laughs> One is my mother. I know that my mother stepfather had some misgivings about me running a campaign. It is not my nature to be out in front of people. But once I committed to it, they committed to helping me and did everything they possibly could to help me out with signs and just doing all kinds of things, including my mother made sure we had at least one nutritional meal every week at our house. <laughs> my son Harrison spent his summer home from college driving around in a pickup truck with a post hole digger and big red signs that essentially said, vote for my mom. And I appreciate him giving up the summer putting in signs. My daughter Claire was a source of inspiration and comfort to me during this time. And she gave me the sage advice that I should wear my glasses because it made me look smarter. <laughs> I forgot or went that today. And of course, my husband Steve, who I've been married to now for 25 years, and I'm just going to say thank you. Um, you think you're ready to become a judge. You study the law and you uh, practice the law, but what they don't teach you, even in the two weeks of judge school, is what to do with all that paper they give you when you're sitting on the bench. You get paper, you get hearing notes, you don't know what to do with all of that stuff. And so my answer to that was to hire Jennifer Brown as my JA. She has made the last eight months wonderful for me. I still don't know what you're supposed to do with all that paper. I just put it in a pile and she takes care of it. She handles my schedule, she keeps me busy, and I so appreciate her everything she's done in my transition. I think that uh, Jennifer looks at judges somewhat like children in that she thinks a busy judge is a good judge. So she keeps my calendar very busy. And at the beginning of the day, she hands me a docket, points me to my hearing room, and essentially hands me over to my bailiff, Carlos Suarez, who is here, who um, takes my safety and the safety of the courthouse much more seriously than I do, which is a good thing. So um, I know that when Carlos comes to me and says, Judge, of course you are the boss, but it means that I've done something I really wasn't supposed to do in the courthouse, like you're not supposed to have hearings about a bailiff there, you're not supposed to just walk in before they get everybody loaded into the courtroom. So he has helped me a great deal and I wanted to acknowledge him as well. In the time that I've served, it's been eight months now, the lawyers who appear before me are knowledgeable, they're professional, they zealously represent their clients, and yet they are always courteous and polite. It makes me so proud to be serving here in the 10th Judicial Circuit. Um, and finally, the judges who all sit behind me here. Every one of them, without an exception, has been supportive, they're knowledgeable about the law, they're willing to step forward and 
give me some thoughts about things and encourage me, and I only hope, we have a wonderful bench, and I only hope that I can live up to the expectations that I know all of you have that have been set by all of these great judges here. Um, so that's my short speech. At this time, though, I'd like Father Al Jenkins from All Saints Episcopal Church to come forward. I've been given a Bible here, and I'm an Episcopalian, and what we do in the Episcopal Church, among other things, is we bless things. And so I'm asking Father Al to come forward and bless this Bible that will be at the court with me every day as I serve the people of Polk County. Father Al. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for this ministry you have given uh, Judge Michelle Pinkett and bless Michelle this gift of a Bible she has been given for her investiture. Bless her family, staff, and those she serves. May she apply the principles of equality, fairness, and integrity in reaching decisions and conduct her office, court, and community activities in a way that will instill public trust and confidence. Amen. Next on the agenda, we have the pleasure of uh, conducting Larry Thomas as our next circuit court judge, and to present him is Perry Bennett, who is the administrative judge of our county. Okay, please, court, um, Chief Judge Jacobson, my esteemed colleagues, and all the distinguished guests here this afternoon, I do have the privilege and the high honor of introducing my former law partner and longtime friend as he takes his seat on the bench of Florida's 10th Judicial Circuit. Uh, just like Judge Pink, in reality, he's been on the bench for eight months already, so he's not a novice any longer. Larry, I was about to think that I was going to be speaking into a retirement ceremony where we got to this. <laughs> but thankfully, we didn't make it, so enjoy the moment, okay? Larry was born in Gadsden, Alabama, but moved to the Sunshine State when he was 16. He graduated high school in Jacksonville in 1966 and then matriculated at the University of Florida where he earned a Bachelor of Arts degree in 1970 and later his JD degree in December 1974. He was admitted to the bar in 1975. I'm proud to say that Larry and I have been very close friends for 42 years now, believe it or not. We graduated law school together and we both were associates and later partners in the Stanley Wines Law Firm for 34 years. Our children grew up together. We played football, softball, and most recently golf together. We also fought side by side in legal trenches as well. In fact, the first jury trial that I ever had was over the old courthouse in Jerry Wood, and Larry was my co-counsel, so have some, we both have some very fond memories of that. Um, Larry's career as a lawyer actually has involved him handling about every type of case imaginable. Sort of the old soup to nuts. Uh, the type of deal, and they included such things as defending a serious matter, such as a capital murder case, trying scores of personal injury cases, setting up corporations, and, writing, and doing things as simple as writing mom and pop wills. He has a wealth of experience. Larry's proudest accomplishment is raising three highly principled, successful, and self-supporting children, Matthew, Whitney, and Nathan. His greatest joy is sharing life with Donna his new bride of less than a year. It was my privilege to marry them October 29th last year. But this biographical information about Larry Helms doesn't tell you much about his character. Who is this man deep inside the core of his heart? I think it can be summed up really in three words. He's a good man. But let me elaborate with a little specificity. Number one, Larry is honest. He is without pretense. What you see is what you get. A person need not worry about any hidden motives or agendas with Larry. Number two, he's exceptionally bright and quick-witted. Larry has a photographic memory and always has a quick retort to any remark that might be directed his way. You never get one over him. Number three, Larry is fiercely loyal as a Gator fan, as a friend, as a colleague, and as a man. Number four, he's also imbued with a heavy sense of common sense. 
which is not very common these days. Number five, he respects confidences. He's known by his friends as the black hole of information. You can talk to Larry about any subject and be assured that your conversation remains private. He's not a tale-bearer or a gossip. Number six, he's possessed of decency. I'm certain that Larry will be well known for his fair-minded rulings from the bench after hearing from all sides. And lastly, he's a, he has a wonderful sense of humor. Larry is self-deprecating and not afraid to take the blunt of his own jokes. He loves life. He loves people. And he loves to talk. <laughs> I've long thought that Larry would make a good judge because he's long loved to hold court in conversation. <laughs> in summation, Larry has the experience, intelligence, common sense, and all the necessary intangibles to qualify him for his role as a circuit judge. I'm confident that these attributes will quickly earn the respect of Larry's colleagues. They will also be the cornerstone of his, rep of his reputation as a jurist. This is a very satisfying moment for me personally. My life, my life and Larry's, as you've seen earlier, has been closely intertwined for as long as I can remember. And now we'll finish our professional careers together by being reunited as colleagues on the bench serving the citizens of Boat County. Congratulations to this good man, my dear and trusted friend, Larry Helms.
all advocates of Mr. Sam Cross.
She, uh, my mother is 87 years old, and she went to every campaign function that we had. Uh, and uh, she is in no means shy. And um, she uh, probably single-handedly carried some precincts. <laughs> because everybody came up to me later and said, wow, your mother's something. <laughs> uh, but I want to thank my wife, Donna. Uh, without her faith, uh, without her hard work, this, this wouldn't happen. Uh, I want to thank uh, John and Kate Dumont uh, because uh, they essentially told me what to do, where to be, when to be there. Uh, and uh, I thought I was working hard, but I found out I wasn't. Uh, and their people told me that. And without their hard work and dedication uh, and their faith in me, their desire to see me accomplish this goal, it would not have been accomplished. So, uh, guys, I appreciate it. I love you. I told uh, people when I was running to judge that I had practiced in all five divisions of circuit court, and that there are 20 there are 20 circuits in the state of Florida, and I've tried cases in 16 of them. I said that to impress them. That's not the reason I'm telling you that. I'm telling you that to let you know that I've spent 40 years, I don't remember the long, long, 40 years now, and I spent most of that time in courtrooms in front of judges all over the state of Florida. And so when I tell you how humble and proud I am to be a part of the 10th Circuit Court, uh, you'll know that I'm saying that with some knowledge and uh, was an experience uh, about the quality uh, of the judges that we have on this page. Uh, I, am, I am beyond proud to be one of their members. I also told people when I was running that I try to be fair, I treat people with dignity and respect. I think I've been doing that for the last eight months and I intend to keep it. Because as proud as I am to be a member of this judiciary, the judiciary in general, and this circuit in particular, my fondest hope is that when I have finished serving uh, the people of this circuit, the people of the state of Florida, the circuit judge, all the people who helped me get here will be proud of their efforts. And I, I think if I can accomplish that goal, I will have uh, I will have done all that I can and all that I need to. Thank you.
and mom and dad are so proud to say that he is gainfully employed in Asia. <laughs> We're talking with her husband uh, recently. Uh, he said they really just did not know what to expect when both of the kids were out of the house. He said, but, uh, you know, we found out we still like each other and we still have a lot in common. Life can throw us some real curves. It tests our mettle in so many different ways. When Judge Butts was in law school, her dad passed away, I think the first year. Her mom had not worked outside of the house for quite some time. However, her mother was determined that her daughter would finish law school. So mom, along with the help of two uncles, dedicated themselves to uh, ensuring that Judge Butts remained and finished law school. And mom, we thank you. We owe you a great debt. Kelly came to work at the state attorney's office uh, in 1991 and left in 1998. Now let me tell you why she left. Unbeknownst to me, Dr. George Butts was a car enthusiast and loved to work on, I think it's MGT, sports cars. Well, there was a very fine lawyer, there is a very fine lawyer, one of them by the name of Charlie Chilton, who had one of those sports cars and uh, who would, on, I think, less than infrequent occasion, or more than infrequently, would ask George to work on it. They're there one afternoon, and he's working on the car, and they're talking, uh, and it gets around to George's wife, Kelly, and what does she want to do? You know, and I heard the story, and I think we know what she wants to do. She's a prosecutor. <laughs> but the long and short of it is they talk, and the next thing I know, Judge Butts has gone with the firm of Sherritt, Bond, and Shelton, a very good law firm. Uh, and I can simply tell you that I owe Dr. Butts for costing us a very, very fine prosecutor. <laughs> While Judge Butts was with us, she proved herself to be a very, very fine leader and an excellent mentor. And you know, you go around the office and, and talk to some of the folks that have been there for a long time and say, tell me about it. And invariably what I hear is that she was unflappable, and regardless of how bad the situation was, she always had a smile on her face. She was in misdemeanors and established our very, very first domestic violence program. And that will become important, you'll see, in just a few minutes. But that program has, has been modified, and it's grown, and it's changed. But we have that program in our office today, thanks to her efforts so many years ago. It was a passion of hers, and that passion continued when she was in private practice. She developed uh, her skills along the lines of being a very, very good family law attorney, always concerned particularly with domestic violence cases, and always concerned with cases that had young people issues in them. Sometimes it's the deeds and it's the actions, not the words that tell us about folks. She volunteered so much of her time to Girls Inc., uh, a place, this one in Winter Haven, where girls after school could go find a safe and structured environment where they would have good role models and where they would basically learn what it takes to succeed in life. She volunteered time with the Women's Resource Center. She worked with the Guardian Ad Latter program, and she did all of this while being a full-time mom and a full-time lawyer. The mom side of her got her involved uh, in a studio in Winter Haven called Barbara's Center for Dance. Paige, her daughter, is an excellent dancer. I can remember going to these, uh, I'll call them end of year programs for one of my grandkids. It really seemed to be the Paige show. Uh, she was there, she was loved, she was absolutely incredible. Judge Butts was involved in organizing events, running a team, and dealing with dance moms, I think that probably helped her prepare for being a judge. <laughs> for those guys that have coached the Little League and had dads threaten them and curse them, I think it's the same as that. Here's the good news regarding Judge Butts. She is 
fully aware that she does not own this office, that this office has been loaned to her, and it is her responsibility to return it in good condition. We've been blessed. We've had the ability to watch now for some time while she's been on the bench, and we know that she has the courage to do the right thing. And that courage is tempered with kindness, patience, and what I will refer to as a reasonable level of tolerance. History shows that she's devoted to her clients, she's devoted to her kids, her husband, her mother. She's concerned with meaningful issues, girls and women resources, guarding that well. I am a believer that it takes a truly good person to make a good lawyer. And I'm a believer that it takes a really good lawyer to make a good judge. The job of being a judge is to figure out what the law says, not what you want it to say. There's a difference between the role of a judge and that of a policymaker. Judging requires a certain impartiality. History shows us that Judge Butts has all of the right qualities. She is going to make us, I mean, I assure you of this as I've done before and we'll do again. She's going to make us an excellent judge and she will make us very, very proud. Allow me to introduce Judge Butts. Gavel will be Kristen, uh, Crystal, I keep saying Kristen, Crystal Martin Thornton. Once again. 
and Andrea Smith. smoothly. 
It is with all these individuals, and they have all played a part in making my transition to the bench run very smoothly. Then there's my family. Mom, you're selfless, strong, and an amazing woman. Thank you for being an incredible role model and always allowing me to reach for my dreams. George, thank you for your unconditional support, especially in this endeavor. I kind of sprung the fact on him that I was going to put my name in for this nomination. There's nothing he had really talked about. And one night at dinner, I said, by the way, I think I'm going to put my name in. He kind of looked at me and went, okay, let's do it. So not only did you support me, but you rallied behind me and were there every step of the way. To Ellen Page, you are my inspiration. Each of you have set an example of perseverance, dedication, and integrity. You encourage me to go after my dream and have no regrets. Thank you for being incredible children. Thank you to all my other friends and family members who have assisted me in this process and have been behind me 100%. I wish I had time to thank everybody personally, but unfortunately, they tell me to keep it moving. Finally, I am thankful that God has blessed me with the privilege of serving the citizens of the 10th Judicial Circuit as a circuit court judge. I embrace this opportunity and strive to make fair and impartial decisions and to make you all proud. Thank you very much. Turn over the rest of this program uh, to our the Honorable Barry Bennett, who's the Administrative Judge of the County. Okay, we will be very brief to get right to the business in hand. Uh, I'm going to introduce Father Matthew Mello, who is going to uh, initiate this part of the uh, court proceeding with a blessing. Day, we take our reading from the first book of Kings. Give me an understanding mind that I can govern your people well and know the difference between what is right and what is wrong. For who by themselves is able to carry out such a heavy responsibility? We gather this day for you, Judge Franklin, and for all jurists. In our Catholic tradition, we have a patron saint for lawyers and judges, St. Thomas More. We ask through his intercession that our Lord bless you, that neither threats or empty promises can deter your duty as a civil leader, that you may be perfect in honesty and love of truth, love for the law and compassion for those who come before you. May the Lord bless you and may he guide you. We ask this all through Christ our Lord. I'll introduce again our State Attorney Jerry Hill, who is going to present Judge Franklin to us. Our guest, what a great privilege to introduce uh, two of our judges today. This occasion is obviously the most personal one for Judge Franklin, but it's also an incredibly important one for us as citizens. The greatest principles of our society, and that certainly includes the law, are meaningless until a real human being exercises responsibility for implementing those principles. I think you'll find that Judge Franklin represents the best that our legal profession has to offer. You've heard it before, but you're going to see just how true it is. Her incredibly varied uh, life works and her commitment to our system of laws make her the ideal judge. Growing up, 
It's my understanding that her father was in the radio business and moved ten times before the age of ten. Finally and blessedly ending up in Lakeland where obviously uh, she stayed. It is my understanding that she is one quarter Irish and one quarter Italian, which explains the temper and all the handsomeness. <laughs> She was a cheerleader in high school and in college. <laughs> Judge Franklin graduated from Troy State, majored in English, finishing in 1984. After graduating, she marries this guy by the name of Rusty. Now there's one of the few things that will make you question her good judgment. <laughs> they had their first date when she was 16 and Rusty was 15. I hope she made him sit in the back seat wearing a seat. <laughs> I think that uh, it's a testimony to her stick to itiveness that they've been married 30 years or more. She taught English at Lake Gibson Junior High. She raised three kids. Katie, who has worked for us in the past as an attorney, and she's raised Justin and Russ. She worked as an investigator, uh, then full time for the Guardian Ad Litem Book. Doing that for a while made her think, uh, and watching lawyers in court, I can do this. And she decides that she wants to go to law school. In 2000, the year 2000, she starts Barry Law School in Orlando. Now let me tell you a story that I think is relevant, and you'll see how it ties in. I am told by those that know these things, you can take two coins that look exactly alike. One is genuine, one is counterfeit. How then can you tell them apart? Again, those that know such things. I suspect Rusty knows about counterfeit, but that is not. <laughs> those that know such things say you can toss the coins onto a hard surface, a table. The one that does not bounce is counterfeit. And the one that does bounce is the real deal. Life tests people, I think, in much the same way by their bounce. The people who possess real worth quit, or don't possess real worth quit. Those that do, bounce. So she begins her law school, and all that while, she's working in the state attorney's office as a secretary. She graduates. She takes the bar. Then she learns, through no fault of her own, that the school had not been timely accredited, and that she had to repeat the last couple of years. Devastating? She bounced. She had the right attitude. She had the stick to it. So, while raising three minor kids at home and one adult child, Rusty, <laughs> she again heads back to law school and obviously completes it. Now, folks, that's a character. Her mother passed away a year ago, and Judge Franklin has no doubt that she continues to watch over and keep an eye on her. Since her mom's passing, she has had a number of good things happen. She got to visit Notre Dame last fall and uh, prayed at the project. She got to visit the Vatican a few weeks ago. She has a new love in her life. A new love. She has both. A brand new grandbaby. And then if you didn't know it, she's an incredible gator fanatic. Now let me tell you real quickly, and think about this. She just returned from Istanbul on vacation with Rusty and with Neil O'Toole. <laughs> that doesn't sound like a vacation. Does it? <laughs> While Rusty and Neil, shall we say, thoroughly enjoyed the Turkish baths, <laughs> I'll have you know that Judge Franklin refused, deciding that a hot shower and a bar soap at the hotel were good enough for her. <laughs> For our office, she worked in misdemeanor, felony, child crimes. She'd been felony director and then back to child crimes. Once she got her law degree, she was ready to go to felony. There was no point in leaving her misdemeanor. She'd been there for a lot of years. And she knew it better than the lawyers knew it. Her great love was crimes against children. I mean, that's her love, and she's very, very good at that. Judge Durbin left us to become a judge, and we needed someone to be a felony director. 
So we asked her if she would step in, and frankly, a little bit begrudgingly, she did what you would expect her to do. She stepped right up to the plate, where she studied for three years. And then we had an opportunity to have her go back to child crimes, and that's where she finished out her career with, with our office. One of her great strengths is that she will listen attentively, she will not prejudge, and she will apply the law while providing a fair and equitable hearing. One other comment that I can't help but make. Everybody in this room knows that Rusty has never had a guilty client. <laughs> I hope that that knowledge does not rub off from the good judge. <laughs> and she recognizes that they are not all not guilty. <laughs> Judges are not simply another politically powerful branch of government. Judges are different. They must arrive at their decision free of personal bias while respecting the limits imposed by the statutes, constitution, and existing case law. All this with their life experience and background tempering those decisions. The most important things to share in this entire world are her faith, her family, her friends, and her career. She brings a rich, and she brings a very background, very background to this new job. She's been tested and proven. And I think most importantly, she has a real passion for the law. Welcome, Judge Frank. We've heard a lot about him, so it's my privilege now to introduce uh, Rusty Franklin, Judge, Judge Franklin's husband, who will administer the oath of office to her. She says he's really a good guy. <laughs> May it please the court. Sheriff, I'm glad you're here because summons and complaint get served on State Attorney Hill for a definition of character. <laughs> Jerry, I lost. I submitted an advisory opinion request to the Attorney General's office, and they said that I could not include love, honor, and obey. <laughs> but I got love and honor 30 years ago. To raise your right hand, please. I, Sheridan Franklin. Oh, I. <laughs> Raise your right hand to repeat after me. I share it in Franklin. I share it in Franklin. You solemnly swear. You solemnly swear. That I will support, protect, and defend. That I will support, protect, and defend. The Constitution and government. The Constitution and government. Of the United States and of the state of Florida. Of the United States and of the state of Florida. That I am duly qualified. That I am duly qualified. To hold office under the Constitution of the state. To hold office under the Constitution. And that I will well and faithfully perform. And that I will well and faithfully perform. The duties of County Court Judge Post County, County Court Judge Post County Court. On which I am now about to enter. Of which I am now about to enter. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. <laughs> To assist with the enrobing of Judge Franklin will be her father, Jim McCrudden, uh, Katie Rule, Justin, and Russ Franklin, her children.
extended the gavel to uh, Judge Franklin will again be Crystal Martin Thornton of the Polk County Trial Lawyers Association. Presenting her plaque uh, will be Mr. Sam Crosby of American Board of Trial Advocates, Tampa Bay Chapter. Judges, uh, Gerald P. Hill II, one of our newest county judges, was elected uh, as the county representative to that body. And he is going to come to this town and present the nameplate to Judge Franklin. Judge Franklin, on behalf of the Conference of County Court Judges, I welcome you to the conference, to the bench. Congratulations, and best wishes, best wishes for success. Everybody has said there are so many people that we could all thank for this, and um, there's just not, there are not enough hours in the day to do it. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to thank my family. My husband is a wonderful person despite everything. People pick on him because he is so good natured about everything. And, you know, as you heard, I'm Irish and Italian on one side, and English and French and Canadian, we can't forget on the other. That combination, if he could put up with me for over 30 years, he can do anything. So, thank you, Rusty. He has never told me I couldn't do what I wanted to do, and um, when it got kind of tough there going through law school twice, and yes, I am stubborn, I think is the right word, and uh, my mom used to say, just tell her she can't do something, and she'll do it. So that's kind of, everybody knows that now, so when they want me to do something, I say, oh, well, you can't do that anyway. And I go and prove them wrong, um, hopefully, most of the time. I would also like to uh, say that when I was going through law school for the second time and working with my three beautiful children who were all in elementary school, my husband <laughs> cooked, cleaned, and uh, made sure they made it to swimming, to soccer, to everything in between as long as I left in the calendar. And uh, my daughter, I'm sorry, Katie, I know now that you will never have hamburger helper in your home. <laughs> Because that was Rusty's go-to meal every time I was out that was gone. Um, the boys, however, I think you both still love it, don't you? That <laughs> is um, And I know Rusty does, but I don't make it. I would like to, as uh, was pointed out, my mom did pass away a year ago. I know she's up there and she is smiling down. I had um, two women in my life, my mother-in-law and my mother, who were strong and very important role models for me. They were both not with us here physically today, but I know they're both up there with their dear friend, Etta Morgan. The three of them were a fun trio, and I know they're saying, you know, go get them, girl. And uh, I know that they would be here if they could be. I thank my dad, who you met, Jim McCrudden, and his wife, Joyce, for always being there for me. And I also thank my mom's husband, Raleigh Vaughn, who is present today, for all of his support and encouragement. My three beautiful children, thank you for letting me do what I wanted. No, I was not a stay-at-home mom. I didn't have that luxury. However, I will say, I think it turned out pretty much okay despite it. Um, I am so proud of all of them in their chosen paths in life. And uh, obviously, my son-in-law, Michael, who is a wonderful dad and husband to my daughter. And I thank them so much for my grandson. 
I don't care how bad your day is, if you have one, and I sound like I just went and got one in the store, <laughs> all I need to do is stop by their house. I'm blessed that they live 10 minutes from me, walk in, make faces at him, and he gives me that big toothless smile, and all is right with the world. So if you don't have one, I advise you to get one. They're all awesome. <laughs> I'd like to thank my, my work family um, from the state attorney's office. I had just a month shy of 15 years in that place. And trust me when I say it was a hard decision to leave, and I think Mr. Hill knows that. Um, I had the job that I wanted when I went to law school when I left there being in charge of the Division Against Crimes Against Children. And while I didn't realize how many different directions it took me during the day until I left, I don't think that I was ever happier as an attorney than when I was doing that job. By doing that job and feeling like I was fulfilling and helping those in our society who need help more than anybody in a voice, I couldn't have asked for any better job than that, and I was blessed to have it for so long. Thank you. I also um, would like to recognize those I worked with who encouraged me, who let me go vent, and I have to single out one person, Beverly Cone. Thank you so much for having the cone of silence that I needed to vent. It is missed, and I never know when I might show up down there again. Um, I would like to thank all of my other family who are here, my sister-in-law, Debbie Morgan, my sister, Patty Schissel, my um, cousin, Missy. I'm trying to see who else am I missing. Um, oh, my brother-in-law, Bob, I'm sorry, and his family. Oh, great one. And also, some of my dear friends who are here, there are several from high school I have not seen in years, and I am so blessed that you guys thought enough of me to come today. I thank you all for everything, um, and I thank you so much, law enforcement community that I got to work with for 15 years. There's a lot said about law enforcement these days, and not all of it's positive. I have to tell you, especially doing the child crimes job, I dealt with law enforcement on a daily basis, at night, in the middle of the night when they needed things, on weekends. Our law enforcement community in this county, sheriffs and cities as well, is phenomenal. And yes, Sheriff, I call the detectives I worked with my detectives. I took ownership of them. And I do think of them as my detectives. They are always diligent, they are thorough, and I can't say enough good things about them. We are blessed to have them in our community. I would like to thank my secretary, Amy, who I stole from the state attorney's office. She kept me straight there for years, so I figured she could do it where I'm going now. And my bailiff, Bo Randall, in the back has been wonderful. Um, and my clerk, Esther. I can't say enough good things about Esther. I don't know if she's here or not. But between the three of them, when I get up there and I'm not quite sure what I'm doing that's right or wrong, and they look over, sweet Esther looks at me and she goes, uh, Judge Franklin, you meant to do this, didn't you? <laughs> Why, yes, I did. Thank you, Esther. <laughs> so as you see, they're the ones that make us look good. Thank you to everybody. Thank you, Governor Scott, for appointing me. And I think I should also thank you, Judge Butts, for getting bumped up as fast as you did, which is <laughs> the position for me. My dear friends, thank you so much. Um, and what Mr. Hill did tell you about our trip, it was our 30th anniversary we went on with our dear friends Neil and Gabrielle Tool, And he didn't mention the whole reason that I got through that was because Gabrielle was with me. <laughs> thank you so much for being here. I appreciate the opportunity to thank everybody who's important in my life. Thank you so much. Once again, what I'm going to ask you all to do, the inclination is to run up and, and congratulate those that have been, uh, for which the ceremony is, but we are going to really try to get a group picture so that we can save it for posterity, uh, or at least for ourselves. So if you indulge us in that, I very much appreciate it. Uh, this will bring us to a conclusion. We have our benediction by Dr. Stephen Lane. <laughs> Let us stand for God's blessing. We have seen today the presentation of the Bible of the four different judges, and so let's listen now to a reading from God's Word. So our blessing today comes from Philippians chapter 4. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, 
If there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard from me, do. And the God of peace will be with you. Go in peace. And ladies and gentlemen, let me remind you of the, uh, the reception that is going to be at the uh, Saunders Law Group office at 480 South Broadway here in Marjo. And it looks like everybody's safe. So any of you indulge us, the court will be in recess. Court is now adjourned.